If you give referrals, you'll get back. If you, if you give something, if you're a contributing member to the space, to the social space, people are much more likely to listen to you, to pay attention to your message, and to engage with you positively. So um, listen first, promote your, and don't just think of this as a bullhorn that you're gonna just sit there and blast out, you know, like direct marketing, direct mail. It's not a direct mail campaign. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a place where you can engage with your customers, you can find out their interests. There's a lot of different uses for the social space. It's not all about direct sales. In fact, it's one of, uh, probably one of the less likely places that you're gonna generate most of your direct sales. It doesn't mean it's a less valuable space, but I think of the social media space as having a lot of different other values building yourself and your brand as a leader in your field, a thought leader in your field, making your company a, a, a highly respected company that people want to go to for information as a, as a resource. Um, maybe it's a way to engage with other members of the online community and get them to talk about you. You know, if one blogger writes about you, it could lead to thousands of people learning about your company and then hundreds of those people potentially buying products and services from you. You may not meet the customer through your Facebook account, but you may meet the blogger who writes about you through the Facebook account, right? So it's more of an indirect relationship building that eventually will lead to a better business practice and, a, and an overall better image um, if, if handled properly. And then, uh, you know, be generous with people. That's the same thing I've just been saying. If you're generous, they'll be generous back. So on Twitter, for instance, People love it when you retweet what they have to say. If somebody says something interesting, you take it and you retweet it. And they remember that. They'll remember that, uh, you know, um, Joe Blow's Carpet Cleaning retweeted something from another vendor who sells cleaning products, right? So you, you've, you've connected with a guy, you, you run a cleaning business, there's another guy on Twitter who sells cleaning products, right? And you retweet a new product that he's selling, and then when you say you've got a special and you tweet out that you've got a special uh, on the DFW carpet cleaning, uh, you might just say, hey, that guy was nice and I'm gonna retweet what he had to say and then promote, his, promote your message to his group of followers. So this is the kind of, kind of reciprocal relationship building that you can get with social media that can be very, very powerful if done properly. Um, so, and the last one and the most important is offer something of value. If you come to the space from a position that you're offering something of value, uh, that's going to be your strongest point of view. If you're not contributing, why would anybody ever listen to you? Why would anybody join your Facebook fan page? Why would anybody listen to you on Twitter? You know, why would anybody do anything? So, you know, whether that be uh, relevant, timely information about your specialty subject that people are actually interested in, like Patty just gave us relative and relevant and timely information about how to protect our computers from malwares and, uh, and hard drive crashes. Um, you know, Patty may well have a blog on her data doctor site that, that is, is connected with all of her accounts where she offers useful information. And I may decide, you know what, I need to follow Patty because if there's a new virus, Patty's the first person to know about it and she's gonna let me know what I need to do, right? So that's valuable information to me and it's worth my time and energy to engage with her a little bit, you know? And that's, that's what it's all about. Now Patty's on my mind. When my computer does break or I do decide to get an online backup system, I go over to Patty and I'm like, hey, Patty's always had good information. I'm gonna go use her as a service. She's on my mind. She's in front of me every day because I'm, I'm on there, I'm chatting with my friends, and there's this business that offers some valuable information to go along with it. It also could be a discount or a coupon plan or a program. So this is about having a game plan. You know, what is it that your profile page or your account is going to offer? Is it going to be an informational source? Are you offering discounts? And if you are, make that part of the branding of your profile. So, for instance, if you have a Facebook page and put it, in, I'll talk about this in a second, put that right on your site and say, join our Facebook fan page to get special, exclusive discounts, right? Man, now I'm going to go, yeah, I want to have an exclusive special discount to this place I was interested in anyway. Now you've suddenly retained a customer, you know, customer retention. So have a game plan. When you move into a space, know what you're going to give. Know what you're offering of value on that space. 
and figure out how you're going to track your ROI. How are you going to track that metric of is this gaining something? Are you going to track it by how many people are following you? Are you going to track it by um, you know, potentially how many sales? But that's very difficult to sometimes track back to see what's this person through my Facebook thing. But you can track it through events and see how many people show up through events that you announce through different profiles. So there's lots of ways to track it. Um, I'm not going to go into tracking ROI because that's a whole different, I mean, we could spend another hour on tracking. But um, think about it a little bit. You know, what are, what are you going to get out of this? How much resources are you committing to it? Are you, as the business owner, going to personally commit, you know, an hour a day to this? Are you going to have um, one of your employees commit a little bit of time to it? Or are you going to outsource it to a firm like ours and have them commit some time to it? You know, where, how are you going to engage and how much resources are you going to be? The worst thing you want to have happen is go to all this trouble to set yourself up with, a, with an account and make it look great and then not do anything with it. And it just is this static dead thing sitting out there and it's just a waste of space. And, um, and in some situations it can reflect badly on you. Now, as small business owners, I think our potential for uh, some of these really negative outcomes is significantly less than for the major brands. So we've had, a, there's a lot of good stories out there uh, about major brands engaging in social media, both successfully and unsuccessfully. Um, a lot of the major brands uh, use social media as a, as a platform for offering discounts that I already mentioned or as a platform for dealing with uh, customer experience and customer, customer feedback, uh, trying to, trying to uh, you know, do customer support even through these things. Sometimes very effectively, sometimes not so effectively if they're not prepared to answer those difficult questions. Um, a really good example of a failed social media experiment is I'm pretty sure, and I, can't, I couldn't find the article in preparation for this talk, but I know this story, um, and I think it was GM launched a social media campaign where they put all, they announced it through all of their accounts and on their micro blogs, et cetera, that uh, they had all of the uh, elements for their commercials were available for you to download, recompile, and post out to YouTube, okay? Is it, was, do you know this story, Mike? No, no. Okay, this is exciting. So um, I'm pretty sure it's GM. But anyway, so they made all these things. They've covered it up. That's why it's hard to find now, right? They made all these things available, and everybody, everybody got on, and they were launching a new truck, right? Well, this is about the same time that gas prices are starting to soar through the roof. Well, you know, a bunch of people went on, and they had, you know, a 1,000 people or something make real commercials for them, you know, where they actually took the time and sat down and rewrote, re recompiled the imagery and the movements and everything and made these neat little commercials, which was the whole point, to have these customers engage and get excited about it and then these customers would repost it on their Facebook account. That part worked. But guess what got all the media attention? The 10 or 20 or 100 or 150 people out there that decided this was really fun and made it into this total smackdown on GM about uh, environmental waste and gas guzzling trucks and you know it was like had the truck driving through you know GM the power truck that ruins the earth you know <laughs> <laughs> so I mean they had these real and they were hilarious I got to watch some of the I just was surfing around some of these online and uh, of course those got reposted on everybody's Facebook account because those were funny and engaging and uh, so that's what got all the media attention and got a huge amount of negative press around this truck launch. So that's a big way to stumble. Now, uh, Mike told a great story yesterday. Mike is a, uh, another social media uh, friend of mine. And uh, he told a great story about uh, Barnes & Nobles. Barnes & Nobles has a Facebook page. And they went on there and they said, uh, well, if you could have one author that you could read before you die, you know, one, you can only read one more author, who is it and why would that author be, right? And they had 500 people respond to that and post their comment, their response. And the nice thing about Facebook is if I went in, if somebody comes into your company page and does an interaction, that interaction then post on their personal profile. So those 500 people each have 100 friends. That's 5,000 people who then saw that message that this person likes this author for this reason. And it's shown very clearly that it's associated with the Barnes & Noble brand. Okay? So that's a very successful interaction. Um, I think Starbucks is, does uh, on Twitter. Starbucks is on Twitter and, and does special deals. You know that you can grab coupons off Twitter these days from Starbucks. 
So uh, there's lots of big success voice. But the thing is, you know, none of us have major big brands that we get to leverage our name. So the actions that we take have to be strategized very differently. And that's one thing that bugs me, even though I just told all these stories. And when you think about social media, a lot of the big stories are told about these major brands and how they've interacted and they've leveraged on their huge brand name to get these really amazing things. Budweiser did a video campaign where they had people videotape their own parties, you know, college frat parties, and had them upload them, which was pretty successful, even though it sounds like a uh, public relations nightmare. But that one actually worked out pretty well. Don't ask me how they control that. Because it's out of control, you know? And that's a big part of it, is a lot of it's out of control. Coke had a, had a fan page go up where uh, some Coke fans put up a fan page. It became the most successful fan page on Facebook that year. Um, it wasn't done by Coke. Coke didn't do it. These independent fans did. And instead of throwing down a lawsuit and saying, you guys have to give us that fan page and relinquish control, whatever, they embraced it. They had these guys fly up to Coke headquarters. They gave them a bunch of merchandise. They videotaped the whole thing, put it on the profile, you know, and it became this great PR thing. So uh, social media is a lot about PR. And so what we need to figure out is how, as small business owners, can we make an impression, make an impact, even if we don't have a national brand to leverage with? How can we engage in that space? And how can we start making progress towards both the public relations standpoint and driving business and driving business to your website too? So let's start out with Twitter. I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna hit the big four. I just picked four today. And like I said, there's a gazillion of these, but we're gonna do Twitter, we're gonna do Facebook, I'm gonna do LinkedIn, and I'm gonna do YouTube. Uh, and I'm going to do bookmarking, the concept of bookmarking, uh, and just kind of talk about it, several sites at once. So uh, here's Twitter first. So Twitter, I just tried to pick out what are the main usage? You know, what, what can you use Twitter to do? Who's on Twitter? First off, who's on Twitter? Any guesses? Yeah. Who's on Twitter? Who do you think? You're on Twitter. Oh, good. Oh, who, yeah, who actually is on Twitter? Raise your hand if you have a Twitter account. Sorry, that's... I meant what demographic is on Twitter was the question I was asking. What demographic? What's that? Celebrities. Celebrities, yeah. A lot of celebrities are on Twitter. A ton of business people are on Twitter. Twitter's become one of the biggest uh, places for businesses to engage. God knows why. You know, I, I have a Twitter account. I use Twitter. I've got a couple hundred people following me. Um, I just got on Twitter pretty recently myself. Uh, but it's, um, or for Globe Runner, that is. And it's, uh, it's, it's an interesting, interesting space. But uh, you know, Twitter has a lot of values, and uh, let's just go through whatever and down we can do here. Um, OK, so establishing your company is authority in the field. So if you have good content, Twitter is one of the most efficient ways to broadcast that content out. You can link your blog. If you have a blog, you can link your blog and have it auto-send out through Twitter. So as soon as you put up a post, it goes out through Twitter. It takes no additional action on your part. You just write down the content. And bam, it goes out. And if you have an interesting title to it, uh, people will start finding it. The other thing that's really neat is Google and Twitter started a new relationship. So now tweets in real time are being posted in search results. So if you're writing about something that is relevant to your field and you're, you've, you've been conscious in the title that you write, that you're writing titles that are being searched. You know, So you don't have to get into the depths of it and go to the keyword tools and figure out the search volume. You can if you want. Um, but what you can do just easily is, when you make up your title, think about titles that people might actually type into their browser to look for stuff. And today, if, you're, if you put a tweet up and somebody searches for that thing that you wrote about, chances are you might come into the search results one way or another. And that, that's launching out soon. We're, we're not really seeing it in full force yet, but that's going to be rolling out here real soon. So suddenly, you can really boost your traffic. Not only can you be seen by the 150 people following you, and seen by however many people are searching on Twitter the topic you're talking about, but you can also see by the millions of people searching on Google if you happen to be fortunate enough to be popped into the search results. Even if it's for an hour or two, you might get you know, a thousand people to your site just like that if, you, you know, if you're lucky enough to get picked up, right? So if you're always out there doing good stuff and writing good content and people, a lot of people are following you, Odds are your, your tweets will be picked up a lot better than if you're not out there doing much, right? So it's about kind of consistent. Um, 
Engaging with customers, I mentioned the Starbucks idea of, of offering sales. If, you're, if you have a brick and mortar store, post in your brick and mortar store that you guys are on Twitter and you have exclusive deals on Twitter. You know? it's, it's all about customer retention. It's all about not just making a sale one day, but getting that customer back into the store to make another sale. Or back engaged on your website to, to make another purchase, whether you're selling online or in, in person. It doesn't really matter. It's the same concept. Because they're at home, they're tweeting, and if they have you on your tweet roll, and they see that tweet roll through, and maybe you only do one tweet a day, but that tweet is an interesting tweet. If they see that, and they're like, ooh, I could save 10%. If I go in in the next day, I'm going to go in. you know, Or maybe I have an hour to call the 800 number and get you know, half price if I buy two shoes at once, whatever. I don't, you know, whatever your deal is, right? Um, OK. Um, you can also, it, it is valuable to stay up to date in your industry. I follow a lot of uh, well-known people in the SEO world. And when news comes out from Google, I follow Matt Cutts, who's Google's sports spokesperson on search spam, right? He really talks about SEO a lot. When he says something new, man, I'm all over it. I read his tweets so I know what the, what the newest things are in Google's algorithms. It keeps me abreast on my industry. So not only is it a good way for me to promote my brand, it's also a good way for me to keep up with my industry. So I think that's extremely valuable by itself. Whether you want to write something or not, it's just valuable to be out there following some good people. Do you have a question? No. no. Um, business to business network, I already mentioned there's a lot of businesses. Uh, drive traffic to your site, we've talked about. Um, let's look at some tools. So let's look at first, I'm going to pop out of here. So if you're on Twitter, what does it look like? Now, if you're going to be serious about it, you should put together yourself a custom background. So this is my Twitter profile for Globe Runner. And uh, one strategy that I personally recommend is put a face with your business. So instead of just using Globe Runner logo uh, as this kind of unknown company, I very much branded the company. Even though we have 10 people on board and you know, I have my wonderful account representatives here, um, I, I very much branded it as you know, when somebody gets onto my Twitter account, they're talking to me personally. You know, that man, they've got the CEO and he's talking to them about SEO. So it's a, it's a personal relationship. And I think that's true even if you had a major company. If you have a rep, like Matt Cutts with Google, for instance, right? I know this guy's name. His name's Matt Cutts. He works for Google. He's one of their senior executives. And he's out there tweeting on Twitter and writing his blog, right? I think that's great. I know it's not Google the faceless. It's Matt Cutts who works for Google, who has really relevant information. And that's why I follow it, you know? I think the same thing should be true for you. So put your face on it, or put one of your employees' face on it. If your employee is a person actually sitting there doing that, and they have a, a, a good looking, uh, friendly face, put them out there, you know? It doesn't have to be you, it could be your employee. For our uh, Baby Safe Travel, for our other business, uh, Megan, who may be coming here shortly, she's she does our Facebook account, and I have her face there as our rep for Facebook. And so people are talking to Baby Safe, Megan, Radke, and Baby Safe Travel. You know, and they know that's who they're connecting with. You know, they have a relationship. You know, so uh, you can brand your own thing. But I actually like to do uh, tweet deck, and this is what I was saying. I was having trouble with. I think that some of the security settings here are not letting me in. But let's see. I've got. Um, well, it looks like it's got my friends up there. Has it got anything else? Messages. Um, it seems to be having trouble accessing it. So this, have you guys heard of this TweetDeck? TweetDeck free software, right? You just download this thing, install it on your computer, you manage your Twitter account. The thing that's great about it is I have I have my screen right here of everybody that's talking that I'm friends with that I'm listening to. This screen, which is not loading properly, has everybody that's mentioned my, my Twitter profile name. So um, this morning, uh, Mike actually mentioned that he was coming to my uh, uh, social media seminar. Well, I wasn't uh, on Twitter at the time that he did it. But in my mentions, I saw it said Mike Newhouse. And it said, you know, I'm going to a social media seminar with Flow Runner. And I was like, oh, cool. He mentioned my name, you know? And it's just a way to get to. So you see who's talking about you. It's a great way to monitor your brand online. And if somebody retweets you, you know they've retweeted you, and then you can kind of pay attention to that person and make sure you retweet them back and reciprocate, just like I was saying you should do. Um, if somebody sends you a direct message, you have that information here. But one of the most powerful things is you can search for a particular subject. I have SEO pulled up as a live search. So I've got a live feed coming in of everybody on Twitter. 
not my friends, everybody on Twitter, mm -hmm. when SEO is mentioned, that'll pop in and it'll re refresh automatically. I'm noticing that we're not refreshing here because of this internet connection for some reason. But it, would, it usually is scrolling and you get four or five things every couple, every minute or 30 seconds, there's four or five people that mention the word SEO. And that way I can see what's trending, what's going on, if somebody has an interesting article. And so I can just see, I got social media pulled up. So you can do that for carpet cleaning, you know? Anytime somebody mentions the word carpet cleaning, man, that's coming up, you follow them. They might follow you back, you know? This is how this, it's a, so I'll just enter in a search, social media. There you go. Live on, live on Twitter, we've got a social media feed. So this is what people are talking about on social media and you can go in and, and read what's being said. Click through to the link and read the full blog post if you're interested in that article that they've tweeted about. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be your article, it could be somebody else's that you're tweeting because you found it and it's relevant to what you have to say. So, um, just a real powerful tool. So that's TweetDeck. The other one I want to mention to you is, is um, Buzzum, okay? Now Buzzum is a, is a, is a real powerful tool. Buzzum is a way, and don't abuse this, please. This is uh, this could be spammy if you abuse it improperly, but it's it's a powerful tool. So what you do on Twitter, the normal thing to do on Twitter is you search your term, like I was just saying on TweetDeck, you search your term, carpet cleaning, chocolate cupcakes, whatever it is, right? And you find other people that are talking about that, you follow them. Hopefully they follow you back. And that's how you build a fan. That's how you build this follower base is by following other people. If they look at your profile and they like what you say or your other tweets, they might follow you back. And then you get a bunch of people following you. So it's a reciprocal relationship. So you go find people that are talking about what you're talking about. Well, Buzzum does the same thing. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to. I've already created an account here. So all I have to do is log in. I just put my. Uh, this is also free, by the way. So I put my uh, Twitter username in there. And you can see it integrates with Twitter and pulls up my account. It's got my little face there. And uh, what I can do is I can I can grow my, little, my, my Twitter account. I can flush my Twitter account, which I'll explain in a second, and I can reciprocate. So uh, what's really neat, I can, so it gives me some suggestions. I always ignore those, and I go to search for people. Okay, I'm gonna copy social media again, so we can just do this. Or entrepreneur, actually let's do entrepreneur. So, you know, I do B2B sales, I'm looking for people who are wanting to grow businesses, so if they have the word entrepreneur in their profile, they might be interested in what I have to say, right? So, I think that sounds like a reasonable word for me to search. So I search entrepreneur, you see it's searching uh, the bio, and so it's looking in their bio information to see if they've used the word entrepreneur. And it's going to populate a list of 50 people that all have that word, and then I can select them all, and I can follow all those people, right? All at once, which is great, because then I don't have to spend so much time going through and finding 50 people with that term. The next thing I can do is I can, let's say, let's say I spend a couple hours on this or spend two hours or something. I can follow five, 600 people, right? Entrepreneur, small business, social media, SEO, whatever I'm interested in, right? Chocolate cupcakes, chocolate cookies, insane treats, whatever you're interested in. Um, you go in there, you follow all these people, and then you give them 24, 48 hours. If they haven't followed you back, they're probably not going to, or they're not active in Twitter. And you don't want to be following 10,000 people and only have you know 500 people following you. So you can go in there and you can click flush. And it'll, you can select anybody, it'll pull up a list of everybody that didn't reciprocate. And it'll knock those people off your, off your follow. And then you can go in and build it up again. So it's, it's a way for you to grow your Twitter account uh, efficiently. So you're not spending all day doing this stuff. It looks like... Is Buzzum part of Twitter? No. Third party software. But it's free. That was that allow, deny access button was... Yeah, allowing it to log into your Twitter account. It's a separate application. It's a separate application. It's, it's a website, buzzum.com, and they've built a computer program that goes into Twitter on your behalf and does this for you. 
you have to have a Twitter account set up? Yes, yeah. you need a Twitter account first, and then you get your Buzzing account, and you connect the two, and it's all free. Same with TweetDeck. TweetDeck is not part of Twitter, it's a separate company. You set up, you download TweetDeck, install it on your computer, and you can watch Twitter through it, right? There's you free things. Do you go on Twitter and TweetDeck? Uh, just the one. I actually just go to TweetDeck. I don't even go to Twitter. I just pulled up Twitter to show you the customized background, so people who don't look at TweetDeck see that you are a professional looking. Um, well, apparently it's not working right because it usually matches a bunch of people. Let me uh, let me show. Let's go back to the presentation. Okay, I think I've pretty much covered what I wanted to cover on Twitter, but what I want to do before I, I leave Twitter is I want to introduce Mark, one of our team members, real quick, okay? So Mark is our resident Twitter expert, and not to brag, but Mark has 25,000 people following him personally on Twitter. So I just want Mark to stand up and talk to you guys a little bit about his experience with Twitter and how it works for him and these kind of things. Thank you, Eric. Yep. I'm Mark Dooley, and I'm working with uh, Eric in Globerunner SEO. And as he mentioned, I have 25,000, over 25,000 followers. You may ask yourself, why? <laughs> well, I'm a businessman. I've done a lot of things over the years. And right now, I'm working in the internet business. But uh, I happen to be a guitar player. I've been playing guitar for over 40 years. And uh, I'm an independent musician. And someone who doesn't have a record company label, if I was ever going to get my music out to people to be interested, I needed some mechanism to do that. Twitter actually allowed a little guy like me to build an international following. And not only do that, but to track results in real time, I could literally herd people to where I wanted them to go and measure the results and engage them and offer them, collect their information. That's the power of Twitter, it's a real time environment. Now, I noticed when he asked you uh, who has a Twitter account, not many of you raised your hands. Okay, so most of you here, I assume, don't have a Twitter account and just really don't know that much about it. Where do you even start you know, with Twitter? Well, first thing you should do is get a Twitter account. It's easy. It takes just a couple minutes to sign up. Then you should just use the search field and search for people of interest, uh, uh, potential customers, find them and follow them. Follow, Twitter will allow you to follow up to 2,000 people without having any uh, restrictions on your account right off the bat. So that's the first thing I would do because obscurity is the enemy for your business. If no one knows who you are in the social media space, it's pointless to have a social media account, right? So it takes a little bit of time and as you do, you learn. It's just like swimming. When you get tossed into the pool, you really don't know if you're... <laughs> If you come from that era where your dad tossed you in the pool, sink or swim, you know, you really don't know what you're doing, but you learn pretty quick. And that's the way it is with anything in sales, in business, is you learn by doing. And, and that's the thing that I would recommend to you is dive in. Don't sit on the sidelines feeling like you have to completely understand it because there's a whole bunch of different ways to do it. Uh, we're all in different businesses. We have different audiences. But, uh, and, and these tools are great. TweetDeck and Buzzum, they are de facto standards for managing Twitter accounts. But to begin, you should just use the Twitter interface and its search tools and follow some people in your area, in your business, your potential customers, and engage in a dialogue with them and then learn how to manage your time with it. You know, just do a little bit each day. Sir. I'm going to interrupt here, but my business is just basically here to get that business and international. Can you make it restricted just to be yeah, you can search local. Right, and you can search specifically in, in your area, Dallas, DFW, use those terms in your search. You know, that takes some time to sort through the results and, and, and see if maybe that's someone that you want to follow. You know, if you're in more of a hurry, just follow them, out, you know, sort them out later. You can use a tool like Buzzum to clear out the riffraff and, and whatnot later, sort it out later. But uh, it takes time to build any sort of relevant audience out there to promote to. Again, obscurity is the enemy of any business, and, and it's the same thing in uh, the uh, Twitter universe. Uh, without followers, Twitter is of zero relevance to you. So that would be the first thing to do is to just use the tools that are available in the basic Twitter uh, interface and get out there and just follow a bunch of people. 
you know, use the search tool, whatever, that's the first thing. After that, you become comfortable with that and the results, you see what's happening there, uh, then I would start to introduce some third party tools to try to manage it. Uh, at this point, is, does anybody have any questions? I'd be happy to answer questions about Twitter that may be relevant to you. Well, I'll just give back to Eric then. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mark. Thank um, yeah, Mark is a valuable resource that you guys have available today. So if you're interested in Twitter, I pull his ear. Uh, let's talk about Facebook a little bit. Yeah, Eric, turn it Just one but good, good thought. Um, for somebody that doesn't have a Twitter account already, is there um, going into it, tips and tricks on some forethought planning, picking account names, user yeah. names, things of that good, nature, so you can be found. Good thought. Uh, yeah, I think I think that's true. It's a different strategy. I mean, you could decide to use your company name or your personal name. It really depends on what you're there to do and, and how you want to present your business. If you want to be, you know, Joe Turner personally and people know you personally and then you offer chiropractic service then do it like that. If you wanted to be chiropractic service in DFW and then on your account profile you would say your name is Joe Turner then you can do it like that. So um, yeah I would think about the name uh, and having search terms in the name is always handy as well. If you, if you wanted to be found for a certain thing you could make you know instead of having the exact company name like if you had DFW clean I keep coming back to carpet clean for some reason. You could have your thing, instead of just being DFW clean, you could have it be DFW carpet cleaning or carpet cleaning service or whatever. You know, add a few other buzzwords in your account. But you want to keep it real short, by the way, on Twitter. Your, uh, your profile name needs to be real short because you only have 140 characters to mess with. So if somebody retweets you and you have a 16 letter name, that's going to really hurt the amount of stuff that they can write next to your name. So keep your your profile name pretty concise. You know, I, I just stick, for me, I use Glove Runner SEO as my profile name, and then I have Eric McGarity as, as the username. So people can see it's Eric McGarity, but the profile name is Glove Runner, which is the name of the company. So, something about, same with all of these spaces, same is true for all of them, uh, but the length is a bigger deal on Twitter. Uh, Facebook, so what can Facebook be used for? You know, I think, for me, I've seen a lot of people be really successful with Facebook if they have a physical location to go with it. You know, and they use Facebook to organize events, things like that. Um, uh, there's an art group uh, called the Mac in Dallas that I'm associated with, and they have a group on Facebook. Every time they have an event, bam, well, that's in my email box, and it takes me back to their, uh, their Facebook page where people are writing about the last event they just went to, and they're writing about the event they're going to go to, and they're inviting people to events. So they're big on events, they have events every week, and it's a way that they keep everybody in touch and let everybody know what events are going on. And guess what? Now I have that group on my profile, so if somebody, one of my friends on Facebook comes in and sees, looks through my profile, they see that, oh, this guy's associated with this group, and they, go, they might go check it out. They've at least seen that name at the bottom of my profile that he's involved with that group. Same with the fan page. So first let's talk about, there's three different types of Facebook profiles that you can get. There's an individual profile. Uh, there's well, there's a profile. It doesn't have to be an individual. There is a fan page, and there is a group. Okay, three totally different types of accounts. They function differently. They do different things. Before you start in Facebook, think long and hard which kind of group you want to, which kind of account you need. You know, um, most of the group and fan pages require you to have a personal account first. So you first start your personal page, and then you can uh, start a fan page from your personal one, okay? So uh, if you, who uses Facebook? I don't expect more people to use Facebook. Almost everybody has Facebook. Who uses Facebook for business right now? A couple people. Uh, anybody want to volunteer like what they do and how it's worked? Yeah. Um, we do for Chicks Ticket. Um, right. I have a retail store. I saw YouTube. your Facebook page. Um, we have special promotions going on there. If you become a fan of Chicks Ticket, yep. there's a discount coupon you get to print off and you can use to redeem as you come into the store. Brilliant. Um, also, um, anytime we get new product in, we put new um, product pictures up, yep. we take pictures of the store. Um, like we're in process right now, we just put all of our Christmas stuff up. So um, 
all of our Christmas pictures will be going on there. We just had a ribbon cutting yesterday, so ribbon cutting pictures will go up. And, and right. Now, do you do you have anything in the store to indicate to people that they should join your Facebook group? Yes, we have yeah. signs everywhere. Signs everywhere. Yeah. I don't even need to speak. You're doing it. That's exactly what you guys need to do. That is it, right there. Brilliant. So first thing, join our group, get a coupon. Oh man. Okay, sure. And it takes me all of half a second to click join. It's so easy to click join. And now when you post your new products, that comes into my news feed. So if I'm on there and then that blips up and I see a purse that I want to buy or whatever, I don't know, I don't buy purses very often. But you know, whatever I want to buy, I think it shakes naked, right? Um, you know, then I'd pop over there and I'd look at the look at the thing and, and I'd see, oh, she's posted a exclusive Facebook coupon today for her new product line, and I print that off and bring it into the store, or vice versa. If I'm in the store and uh, I, I get my receipt or I get my thing, there's signs that say join our Facebook page to get coupons. If I like the store, I'll join it, and that'll keep me engaged with you as a as a store. Yes, sir. My question goes to her. How much percentage of sales do you generate? Um, it's, it's more and more now because we're getting more um, fans involved. Um, anytime somebody comes into the store, we can log them in and set up a, a page for them that we can link them to them. Um, and we have a database that we get to pull off that because it has an email to it so that we can blast emails off of it. Right now, I'd probably say if I had to quantify it, probably 25% of that alone comes from. It can be very valuable. And, and as we saw, everybody's on Facebook. Uh, I mean, almost everybody has an account, uh, a personal account, it seems like. Uh, uh, my wife is very, you know, all of her friends are always on Facebook. Everybody's gathered on Facebook. So they are a good percentage of their time. So if you can get your brand shot in there just in little tiny pieces every now and then, uh, that's just going to bring that awareness of your brand back and get that repeat visitor. Yeah, but if you're a business, as it's being suggested here, are you starting an individual page, 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 or group page? Well, that's something I think we should think about. Um, the fan page is the most common business model. Okay, the fan page is designed uh, for that type of activity for a business. So that would be my default answer: is the fan page for chicks dig it and guys dot 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 guys do too or whatever, right? That's, that's a perfect use for the fan page. Now, I happen to know that you're an accountant, right? So for you, it might be much better to do your personal page and utilize the personal page and utilize it for both personal and for business, but to be very, very careful how you utilize it personally. And this is what I mean by that. When you create your page, you are doing it with the intention of promoting your business through this page yet you're going to make it feel personal because your clients want to know you personally, they feel loyal to you, so even if you, um, for some reason, that some other accountant comes in from out of town and offers them a better deal, you don't want them to switch because they know you, right? They feel loyal to you because they know you. So this is a part of them knowing you as a personal business owner slash service provider to them. So for your business, I might recommend a personal page and not using it to post your wild party pictures, right? But using it to post, um, you know, just communicating with people, normally through Facebook, just so they know you, who you are. You post your family photos there so they get to know you, but nothing, um, nothing at all controversial, never post your political points of view, you know, just a, a, a personal engagement so you're personally connected with these clients of yours. That's the way I might utilize it if I was a, person, a business writer, like a lawyer or an accountant or an insurance broker or things like that. Because I'm not going to be a fan of accounting necessarily, right? And I'm not going to join in and say, yes, I'm so excited to be a fan of accounting. I might be a fan of Chicks Dig It because I think it's a cool store to shop at. Does that make sense? Kind of? Kind of? Well, maybe we'll answer questions at the end. I'd love to discuss it more. Yeah. Any experience with the businesses of B2B? How do they use Facebook? Facebook? Well, I don't really use, personally, I don't use Facebook for my own business, which is a B2B business, to answer your question. It can be used. <laughs> it can be used, but I personally see, this is my personal point of view, I'm sure there's others that would disagree with me. 
but I personally don't see Facebook as a fantastic B2B platform. Um, I wouldn't say don't use it, but for me, there's other platforms. So, that that's that's true. True. so, so Twitter would be more for B2B. Yeah, developing customer relationships and customer retention. Um, I think I, I've seen a lot of people be very successful with customer retention through Facebook. Just like we just got that wonderful example from Chick Stiggett. And that's customer retention, right? I mean, you're not advertising. Now, you can get new customers through it, and here's how. Uh, Facebook has a, uh, an ad service, which is a pay-per-click ad service. You can actually advertise your Facebook profile on Facebook. You have to pay about 80 cents a click. So to get 100 people to visit your profile, it's going to cost you uh, $8, right? So um, did I do that right? No, $80. I was off. $80. So it can be expensive. Um, it depends on what you sell or what you do, whether or not you can generate a profit off that. But then it's the same sort of thing. You get them there. You offer them special deals. They join your group to get their special deal. Hopefully they come and make a direct sale and you can justify that ROI. So with some businesses, it makes sense to run an ad on Facebook to promote your, promote your page. You can promote your real website too, but on Facebook, people are not in the direct buy mood. You know, they're not there to direct buy, okay? They're there to connect with friends and they may become a fan of yours and buy later. But you know, you gotta think about the buy psychology. When people are on search, and they're searching for the product. They're ready to buy the product. When on their, they're having a conversation on Facebook and they see an interesting photograph and a little description that catches their attention and they click it and they go to your fan page and they realize that they like shopping for purses and they decide to join so they can get a coupon. They may not, I mean, they're not there to just make that buying decision. They're there to engage. And so you can gain new customers through it, um, but I would do it strategically. Um, Let's look at what other resources we have. Um, Facebook Connect is another good resource, which uh, uh, I'll give uh, Mike credit for too, because he let me in on that one. Facebook Connect is, is a computer, um, a thing that you can add to your website. Um, it's, it's an integration, it's a little more technically difficult, but if you have a software developer, they should be able to do it for you. If you're pretty tech savvy, it's not that difficult to do. You just have to add some JavaScript to the back of your site. And if you have a, a blog that takes comments, Facebook Connect will uh, allow people to leave comments using their Facebook username and password. And then that comment is reposted not only on your blog, but also on their Facebook account. So suddenly, their comment that they made about your blog entry goes on their Facebook account to their 150 friends who are reading their news feed and see that they like this article and then their 150 friends maybe click over to your website and also like what you're talking about. This can be a fantastic thing. And this works pretty well for B2B, by the way. B2B businesses, because guess what? Who's gonna comment on your blog? People in your industry, right? So if you talk about chemical processes and whatever, and they click through, make a comment, it pops up on their Facebook page, chances are they're friends with other people who are also industry interested in that industry, and they may also want to read that article. So that's a decent way to use B2B Facebook. It's not your, per, it's not your profile you're marketing, it's their profiling profiles you're leveraging, right? Very different, very different tactic, but uh, I think a very effective one. Um, linking Facebook and Twitter is always a good idea. If you're gonna do both, you should link them, they should feed to each other, so when you do something on Twitter, it posts in Facebook, and you don't have to go double posting all the time. I'm a real big believer in automation. My blog post that I just released last night is about automating your social media profiles. Read it for more details. Um, and then you can also link your blog to Facebook and have your blog feed in uh, to your Facebook account as well, just like you would on Twitter, so the people that are connected and are fans to your store see your latest blog post. So if you are blogging, there's lots of really fancy ways to integrate that are really simple, really easy to do. Uh, okay, let me just make sure I didn't miss anything. Promoting your fan page with ads, promote your fan page on your in your physical store and on your site, just to regroup. And then what do you think about LinkedIn? Group. I'm not well, I got more slides. Am I running out of time? <laughs> yeah. I'm out of time, huh? Not, not oh shoot, I am running out of time. Woo! I've got a lot to go. Okay, we'll think about groups later. I don't have time. <laughs> 
Um, LinkedIn. Okay, LinkedIn is, is great. I love LinkedIn. LinkedIn is perfect for B2B. Same kind of things go. Um, you can link your LinkedIn and your blog and your Twitter account. So if you're Twittering, it's popping up on LinkedIn. Why is it important to keep posts on LinkedIn? When you post something on LinkedIn, your profile moves to the top of the feed. And when somebody logs in, they say, uh, John Smith updated his profile, or John Smith made a comment about this, or John Smith did this. It keeps your face in front of these business relationships that you have. And that's, it's all about just keeping your company and your brand in front of them. So LinkedIn is, is more about creating an individual profile. There's another really valuable thing that LinkedIn does. LinkedIn is one of the few social networking sites that has a link that is a live link actually online that is not blocked that actually passes link juice back to your site. So link building is one of the most important parts of SEO about getting your site searched. And so you can get a live link. And I'll just demonstrate it super quick. I'll try to demonstrate this. But what you need to do, go to LinkedIn. Man, I'll be super quick with this internet. So I'm already signed in. I go to my account settings. What's the password? Yeah. <laughs> uh, public profile. So I went to account settings, public profile. And then I go down here and I look at what's available on my public profile. And I click this website one, OK? Save my changes. Then I go to edit my profile. And you see these websites right here, right? So I could add a new website, but I'm just going to edit one that I already have. And look what I did. I took the time, and I didn't say, right here, I didn't say my website, my company, my blog, my RSS. I said other. <coughs> this is super important, by the way. Other. And I typed in either my company name or a word that I wanted to be found for. Nobody is looking for my company. They're looking for you, right? So I usually use my company name on this particular profile. But you want to use the word that you want to be found for. So if it's your company name, start with that. You want to be found for your company name, not my company, right? And that matters a lot. So click other, and then obviously save changes. And now you have a, a link that's a free link out there on cyberspace that's helping your site be more searchable. That's an important, uh, important thing to do. Last but not least, let's go to YouTube. Let's see, I, let's see if I missed anything really important in Facebook. I know I'm hurrying up here. Integrating your blog and Twitter again. Um, oh, uh, LinkedIn Content Management. It's a, it's a third party software you can download and it'll, it'll pull all of the contact information out of your LinkedIn account so you can then market to those people um, or reconnect with them in some way or another uh, as a mass mail because you're not allowed to mass mail through LinkedIn directly. You can only mail to like 30 or 40 people at once. So if you have 150 or 300 people following you, or LinkedIn with you, you can download the, that as contact sort through them and contact those people later. Uh, once again, uh, give to give. Recommend quality people. You know, think about who you know in your life that you really think is great. Recommend them. Chances are they might recommend you back. That's going to help your profile. It's going to make you look like a more credible person. Um, I don't. I don't really like. You know, the, the it lets you ask for recommendations. If you do, if you offer a service, if you're an accountant, and you go and you save somebody a ton, ton of money, you might ask for a recommendation. But generally, I don't ask for recommendations. I recommend people I really believe in, and most of the time, they recommend me back because they also really believe in me. And it had to be somebody that I legitimately had a business dealing with that legitimately I helped in some way, um, or they helped me in some way. But you know, I think that that's a good way to approach the subject. And then um, I like to use LinkedIn for, uh, for asking for advice for my business connections. And this is a really, uh, it's really smart, I think, because you're asking them for advice. It makes them feel good that you respect their opinion also keeps you on their mind. And when they have an idea to use a service that you happen to sell, you're going to come to mind and not your competitors. So I think 
um, asking for their advice. I recently uh, asked for hiring advice if anybody knew anybody because I was hiring for a position. And I hired a software developer from a friend in LinkedIn. I hired this guy because of that referral. So it's a great way to find employees. And if you're looking for a job, it's a great way to get a job too. YouTube, uh, uh, set up a YouTube channel. It's super, super easy to set up a YouTube channel. And you can customize that channel to uh, re reflect your branding as well. I'm out of time, but I, I would show you our YouTube channel that's set up with our branding. Today, it is so easy to take video and put it on YouTube. Uh, do we have a video on YouTube? Yes. We do. Let's show a video on YouTube. so amazing how quick and easy it is. Isn't that magical? I love it. <laughs> how quick and easy it is. So now this video is on our YouTube channel, okay? And in about, there'll be about an hour delay, but in roughly 30 minutes to an hour, it'll pop up. Wait, here it is, here it is. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait. There it is. I uploaded a YouTube video for Globe Runner SEO social media presentation. Damn, now it's in my YouTube feed. The 300 people that, or 250 people that follow me on, on Twitter now saw that I uploaded my video on YouTube. And uh, before I know, this is all about automation, right? This is about life is easy. Make it quick, make it easy. And then uh, very simply, I can embed this um, into my blog. There'll be a little bit of an embedding. Will it have sound? Yeah, it'll have, it does have sound. I'll just, I don't have speakers that are loud enough for you to hear. This can be easily embedded into your blog and um, Let's see, where is it? <laughs> well, anyway, I, I don't want to take up too much time. Yeah, I'm running out of time. But you can embed it in your blog. So uh, YouTube is a fantastic quick medium. Don't be intimidated by doing videos because it really doesn't take that long to do a nice little video. Pop it up on your YouTube channel. Pop it into your website. Uh, yes? So Eric, where do you fit in in this equation? How, how do you mean? As far as, I don't have time to go right. promote this thing. I agree. Well, I was told not to promote my business too much. But we, we do all this for clients. So if you don't want to do it yourself, we're happy to do it for you. It depends on how much time we spend on it. So if you want us to spend eight hours a week, it costs one amount. If you want to spend 40 hours a week, it costs a different amount. So it just depends on how much time we're putting into it for it on your behalf. Or if we're generating content, if we need to outsource to do professional commercial on YouTube, then obviously we have to charge you for that. But we just do, it's a per, per uh, engagement thing. Or you can just watch on YouTube for free. Or you can watch me on YouTube for free and I'll tell you how to do it. But if you don't have time, call me. <laughs> and we're, we're, we're more than happy to do all this stuff for you. Yeah, and that's, and we do, you know, we specialize in that. And, and, and getting your website ranked in the search engines is what we also specialize in as well. So you get thousands of people hitting your site every day, organic, that's it. Um, okay, so I don't have too much time to go into this. I don't think I have enough time to do social bookmarking, unfortunately. I want to leave a few minutes left for questions. So let me, uh, we'll talk about social bookmarking another time. Just look at my blog and I'll do a blog post about social bookmarking. I already mentioned synchronizing your accounts so everything works together. Um, I've got a handout for you, which has the bullet points from the, from the slideshow. And it also has a list of, I think it's 37 social media accounts and a description of why those, how those accounts can be used. So it's a very valuable list. Um, I'll hand these out and answer questions while I do that, because I know we're out of time. Let's see. Take uh, 
it's uh, we didn't have time to staple it nice. Looks like well, yeah, they're just out of order. Yeah, so that each every five pages. Yeah, every five pages. So take five pages. Right. <laughs>